you're looking at a real 10 year, 100,000 hours, zero point energy device. Yes, the energy comes from the vacuum of space. Absolutely. Zero point energy is a real concept within physics and it relates to, there's two things it relates to. So zero point energy on one side relates to the lowest possible energy state of a quantum system. So that's what zero point energy is. Vacuum energy then is the idea that the vacuum itself of space has a lowest energy state. Um, and that's because the vacuum isn't technically empty. We say it's empty because for all intents and purposes for us, it is empty. But there are these constant fluctuations and because of these constant fluctuations, what that means is you get these little um, creations of particle pairs, but they also immediately annihilate as well. So there, there's this constant creation and annihilation of particle pairs. Um, so we believe that the vacuum has a base energy state, but we don't know what that value is. And it is also entirely possible that the base energy state might balance out across the entire universe to just be zero, but it also might have an actual value. Now there's this whole other thing then that goes into it when you kind of bring vacuum decay into it, because there's these ideas of our universe being in a stable state versus a metastable state. And so if we're in a metastable state, then maybe there is an actual lower energy state that you could be in. And um, so there's this, this whole thing to do with vacuum energy and zero point energy that are very real topics in theoretical physics and in relation to quantum mechanics and uh, our understanding of the energy levels and creation of uh, particles. What it isn't is a usable energy source. Tesla was right. They've been able to accomplish it after decades of thousands of tests. These these guys, the, I'm going to call them the ZPE bros, um, because they always love to bring Tesla or the Tesla bros. Let's call them the Tesla bros because they always bring Tesla into it. They love Tesla. They cannot stop talking about Tesla because he was this great inventor uh, who also supported eugenics. But, you know, everyone has their flaws, I guess. I'm not discounting any of the work that Tesla did, but Tesla never worked on zero point energy. Tesla did not discuss zero point energy. Absolutely none of his work in any way relates to or references zero point energy. Something Tesla did do was what he thought he could do was extract energy from the earth. He thought he could extract energy from the earth and that he could send the energy through the earth without the need of wires. So when he was kind of talking about like wireless um, energy sources, what he meant was that he felt that you could take the energy from the earth and send that without needing all that external infrastructure that was required at the time in order to send electricity around the place. So that's what he was talking about mostly. Uh, again, like zero, anything to do with zero point energy. We're going to skip some of this because it's it's just, it's talking about, it's, it's talking about the, the magic and the wonder of this thing without actually explaining a single bit of how it works at all. Like there's, there's not a single explanation in this video about how this is supposed to work. Point being is that we finally broke through zero point energy is real. They also call it low energy nuclear reaction. But and this is where we have the major, major red flag that should immediately tell you that this is entirely without question a scam. He just said zero point energy is real. They also call it low energy nuclear reaction. And I, I don't know how, I just want to stress as much as I possibly can to you. These are two entirely different things. That There is no connection between these two things. So zero point energy, as I said, it relates to the lowest energy state of a quantum system. And you can discuss it in terms of vacuum energy being the lowest energy state of the vacuum of space, right? Low energy nuclear reactions refers to cold fusion. Cold fusion was an idea that a few scientists thought back in, I think it was like the 70s or the 80s or something, that they thought might work. They did some experiments, thought they got some results that made sense, and then immediately could not replicate. They couldn't redo it. They couldn't get the result again. And a bunch of scientists all around the world immediately got really excited about this and went and tried to replicate what the work that they did as well, and they couldn't replicate it. And because no scientists around the world could replicate it and everybody looked a bit harder at what they were doing and their methods and they found a bunch of flaws and realized 
they never actually got a low energy nuclear reaction. That's not what happened. What you're talking about is creating fusion as it happens in the sun under the pressure and the temperatures of the sun, but doing it at room temperature. Now, in order to get fusion to work, you have to press push past something that's called the Coulomb barrier. Um, and in order to uh, push through the Coulomb barrier, you need a huge amount of energy and you have to force them to, you have to like push and force and force these atoms together in order to get them to bind, to, to fuse and have that fusion reaction. Uh, so you need enormous pressure and enormous energy and you just cannot achieve that at a regular room temperature. It's just not something that is plausible within what we know and understand. Does this mean that people don't look into it? Absolutely not. Of course people look into it. We look into everything. People have this mistake with science that it's like, oh, we don't care about certain things or we're not open to new ideas. No, we, we look at what's plausible and we, we try to make it work. And then if through all of the tests and all of the experiments that we do and all of the research and all of the mathematics and all of the simulations and everything that gets done, if we can't figure out a way that we could actually physically make it happen, well, then we move on to something else. And that's why you have some things that remain like in the realm of just like mathematics and, and ideas and theoretical ideas that we can't, we don't currently have the ability to be able to test because we just don't have the equipment, the technology, the understanding, all of these things. So it's not to say that there might not be some method in the future that would allow low energy nuclear reactions. And it's not to say that there might not be some meth method in the future that would allow you to extract energy from the vacuum of space. But they're two entirely different things. So if someone is trying to sell you a zero point energy machine and then saying it's also called low energy nuclear reactions, they don't even know what they're talking. They don't even know the words that they're using. They're just using buzzwords in physics that they don't understand themselves as some way to describe this thing. And they're hoping that you won't understand it either. So you'll buy into it, um, which is why it's a scam. Now, he says the name of the company is called Quantum Eversource. And we can go to the company's website. And there's a few things that should immediately trigger little red flags in your brain. OK, so the first thing that should trigger a red flag in your brain is that there is no details whatsoever on the website about who runs the company. There's no information about who the person who set up the company is the founder. There's no information about the science, um, the chief scientific officer, anyone that's on like a board of directors. There, there's nothing. There's no company information whatsoever. But they do have a pre-order thing where everything is conveniently out of stock. Now, the images that they have as well are just like, I mean, these have to be AI generated images. And this is all you get. You get a, a, a single AI generated image of a, um, of a box with some cute little purple LED lights underneath it. Um, even on the box, when you look at it, this is supposed to be a power bank, essentially. There, there isn't even uh, outlets. Like, what can you plug into it? Is it USB-C? Is it, you know, is it kettle lead? Like, what is it? There, there's nothing. There's no information on it. The other thing about it is that on the website, there's absolutely zero information about the science of how this works. Now, they explain in just a few sentences roughly what, z what zero point energy is. They say this energy extraction is achieved by manipulating subatomic vibrations in a way that converts the storm and power into useful electricity. That's all that they give you. They give you no other information as to how they actually achieve this. There is no publications in any journals that show the that show the that give you the quantum mechanics equations of how this all works. There's no schematics. There's no patents. There are no videos showing it actually being used. There is absolutely nothing. This is not a real product. Um, it is absolutely without question a scam. And I don't really understand why people are trying to scam anyone with this. It seems like just such a crazy thing to use. Now, there's a few other things that I just want to say about this briefly, just to kind of help really wrap your heads around why this isn't a real thing. So we already know that the, the company hasn't given any information that shows how it works, why the way it works, or 
Uh, it's just basically an AI image of a box. This, it's Theranos. Do you remember Theranos? Do you remember the Elizabeth Holmes story? Do you remember the box that like they wouldn't share the information about how it worked because trade secrets, trade secrets with Silicon Valley, we can't give you trade secrets. And it was like, no, it didn't work. And that's why they couldn't share the information because it never worked. It was just a lie. Um, this is essentially that again. Now, the thing about it is what we do know about the concept of vacuum energy, because that's what we're talking about, vacuum energy rather than specifically zero point energy. Um, what we do know, right, is that what we're talking about in these fluctuations is what gets created are these particle pairs. And the particle pairs is it's a, a particle of matter and a particle of antimatter. Okay, that's why they're constantly created and annihilated. Because when matter and antimatter come into contact with each other, they immediately annihilate. The only possible way for you to get that energy is to separate those particles, right? So you got to create the pair and separate them immediately so that you don't actually, uh, so that they don't annihilate. You need to separate them. There are two ways that you might be able to separate these. Either you need enough mass energy to force the separation, uh, which means you need a black hole, right? So, so this is a genuine thing that we talk about in regards to the creation pair. One of the particles falls into the black hole and the other particle escapes. This is essentially Hawking radiation. This is essentially what we talk about when we talk about black hole evaporation. It's the creation of the particle pair, one falls into the black hole, one goes off. The other way to do is quantum electrodynamics. So the idea is that if you have a high intensity electric field, which you could create using a laser pulse, you might be able to force these virtual particle pairs to become real particles and actually exist and not like annihilate. Um, in order to do this, you need a laser that has power to exceed, I wrote, I wrote this down, um, it has to exceed the Schwinger limit, which is about uh, 10 to the 18 volts per meter, more powerful than the most powerful lasers that exist on Earth today. So I do feel very passionate about this and it's because of, like I said, someone is trying to sell a product. People are on here, they are making videos, they are spreading this information and they are trying to get people to buy into this product. And their method for doing that is to create this idea that everyone is lying to you, this is a big secret, nobody wants you to know because big energy, big this, big that and they just ignore the global scientific community that has said, listen, if you created this, tell us how you did it, publish a scientific paper on how you did it, and you will win a Nobel Prize. And everybody in the scientific community will immediately jump on doing this research because it's so bloody fascinating. We love quantum mechanics. We love anything that is new. We absolutely love discovering new things and new ways to do things. Did you not see that we built an entire 27 kilometer uh, collider just to find a particle that nobody was sure actually existed or not? We like doing this kind of stuff. There are big, huge facilities that are trying to get fusion reaction to work. Why would we not want to get this to work if it did? The thing is, it doesn't. So please uh, be careful. Wh whenever someone is telling you something that, and they're saying, oh, people don't want you to know this, or it's a big secret, or they have all these reasons why it's kind of hidden, the first thing you should always check is, are they trying to sell you something? And if they are trying to sell you something, where where is that? Where is it coming from? Like check the company website. Okay, well, who runs it? You know, who, who's looking after it? Where's where's the information? Where are the descriptions? If they can't even give you a video of the thing working, why, why would you ever buy into something like this? So yeah, zero point energy is not a real usable energy source. It only exists as zero point modules in Stargate. It is nothing but science fiction. Ah, oh, think critically about these things. Uh, look, like I said, look at the sources, look at the websites, try to figure out like what's the intention of the person giving you the information? What do they want from you in return? Um, ask questions. If they're not answering your questions or if they're kind of dodging it and they kind of just keep going, oh, but you know, it's, we can't tell you that because trade secrets, just remember Theranos and remember Elizabeth Holmes. <laughs> and um, yeah, stay nerdy. Okay, bye guys.